want to thank God for the offering this morning. Thank God for those that gave, those that didn't give a lot. We pray that God bless the offering, the build of his kingdom. I wonder at this time if anybody's got a song on their heart. Well, since everybody's half asleep this morning, everybody just stand up right now. <clears throat> what you didn't realize is that just because there's a few people missing, that means you've got to do twice as much today. <clears throat> so that don't mean there's time to uh, like lay around and be half asleep. So we're going to get fired up. And um, you all know my favorite song, This Little Light of Mine. We're going to sing that together. And um, we're going to sing it like we mean it, right? And because we are the light, correct? Christ said, I'm the light, but I'm going to go away and I'm going to leave you to be the light. And so um, we're in a lot of darkness the day we live in, so we've got to be the light. So everybody, let's go ready. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Do you mean it? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let him. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All right. <clears throat> we might have edited a few verses there and cut a few in and out there, but got the main point across, didn't we? We're going to wake up and we're going to be excited to be at God's house today, excited to be with God's people, let our light shine today, and uh, my goodness, what a beautiful day the Lord's gave us today, and what an opportunity to be at God's house this morning. I'm just glad I'm able to be here today, and I hope and pray you're glad you're here this morning. So um, let's be much in prayer for the hour of service. Um, Psalms 46, you got your Bibles, want to turn with us today. Um, I want you to turn with me and be much in prayer for the service today that God would um, send a great message to strengthen and help us this morning. Um, a lot of things going on right now. Um, we're missing a uh, very dear friend, a wonderful church member, um, Mr. Larry Samson. We all miss him this morning. Um, but I thought about as I was up in the choir singing what I would exactly say about that this morning. Um, Larry would want us to be happy today. And Larry would want us to go on. And Larry would want us to have church. And uh, he'd want us to rejoice um, Larry's going on to be with the Lord. Do you all realize that this morning? Um, the Bible says to be absent from this body was to be present with the Lord. And so there's no doubt in my mind he's enjoying heaven right now. So let's be much in prayer for the hour of service today and pray that God would help us. I want to say this before I get started. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on and um, a lot of people missing and people having to do jobs they usually don't do. And I appreciate that from everybody uh, for you stepping up and doing that today. And uh, I, I, to be honest, I had the message last night on my heart and um, I laid down and thought, well, I've got this one, you know. Um, God, you've really got me prepared and I'm ready. Now, if you ain't never tried to preach, and that's about 99% of you all, you all can't relate with this. But... I thought, well, you know, this is good. And I went to bed, and I slept like a baby, I'll be honest. And uh, about 5 o'clock this morning, um, the dog started barking. And uh, I don't know if the devil got in him or if it's God. But anyways, um, I woke up, and um, God began to talk to me. And since then, I've had four messages God's gave me. So I'm not going to preach them all today, don't worry. Um, but I've kind of been hauled it a little bit, to be honest. And the one I'm fixing to preach, I got over here in the office about 30 minutes ago. So um, we just trust God and we rely on Him. I know God's able to help me this morning. He always has and God always will. So um, let's uh, open our hearts and let's see what God has to say to us today. Psalms 46, um, very familiar scripture, something that uh, David, I don't know if you've ever read through the Psalms or not, but... Um, David was a man that was just real with God. Didn't matter what was going on. Um, he just told God how it was and told God how he felt. And um, likewise, when God would speak to him, David 
would listen. So um, he was real with God and he was honest with him. So I, I want you to pray this morning. This is the way that um, David felt about God. And um, I hope and pray that you can get some strength out of this message today. This message that God has laid on my heart today, there's no doubt in my mind that he tailored it for everybody that was here today because um, he knew he was going to be here and it's not like it's been on me for six months to preach this. God had this message for you today, um, so I want you to listen to what God has to say. Uh, Psalms 46, it says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You remember that verse. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved, God shall help her, and that right early, the heathen raged, and the kingdoms were moved, but uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Salai. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. And that's, that's all I'm going to read this morning. There, there's verse 10 in that, and a lot of people, uh, I probably preached about that verse before a lot, maybe, maybe even here, but I'm not going to read down into that. I, I want to stop right there. That's where God... Um, told me to stop this morning. And the thought that God's laid on our heart today um, is going to be that whole verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Now, I want you to pray for just a few minutes that God um, would help us today. And I I thought about um, David when he wrote this. And, you know, these Bible characters, these people, um, great men of God in the Bible that took time to write these things. I've often thought about how much more men you would get out of what they wrote if we'd really relate to them and see who they were. I, I want to talk about David for just a minute. David was a man, um, the Bible said that he was a man after God's own heart. In other words, he had a good heart in him. Now, he was not perfect. Um, we've talked about that a lot. David was a murderer. David was a liar. David was an adulteress. And David was all the above. Um, but through all that, God seen something good in him. And so I, I'm glad today that even though I'm a, a, a liar and even though I steal from God at times, and even though I'm not what I should be, I'm glad that God loves me unconditional. What about you? That God um, looks past my faults and He looks past my failures. And Charles, when I get lazy, uh, I'm glad He's always working with me. And so I'm, uh, I want you to notice that David is a man just like me and just like you. But David, something I want to talk about for just a minute. David spent most of his life, when people um, think about King David, they think about him living in a palace and they think about... Uh, Uh, all the great things and all the men that was under him and about, uh, you know, all the things that he had and all the possessions. But uh, people fail to realize that David spent most of his time on the run. In other words, there was always somebody chasing him and he um, was always at war with people and he was always the devil, the enemy was always after him. People don't uh, really realize that. Now, I want you to think about yourself. How would you like to have to live a life that was always on the run. You were always worried uh, about somebody trying to kill you and you were always worried about uh, hardships coming. And no doubt there was times I thought about uh, David was talking about God being a refuge. I'm going to preach on that this morning. God is our refuge today, folks. God uh, is the one that we run to and God is the one that we turn to. And I I look out today and I see people that uh, I can just see a lot going on in your head. You're going to have to get out and do this right here. Everybody do this right here for just get it all out. Let's shake it all out on the ground and let's tune in for a few minutes today. God uh, wants to help us today with a great message. One that uh, God's going to use me as a mouthpiece and speak directly to your heart today and uh, give you comfort today and give you peace today and help you to realize that uh, hey if you belong to God today you're somebody. Amen. Uh, Everybody in the congregation today that have been saved by God's marvelous grace 
grace. I'm glad today that uh, we're not hopeless today, that we've got hope today, and it's in Jesus Christ our Lord today. And Chris, no matter what happens, if uh, the earth is removed, and no matter um, if the mountains crumble, David said he wasn't going to be afraid. Why? Because his help was in God today. And that's where my help comes from. That's where your help comes from. Our help is in the Lord today. We don't trust in what man can do. Don't trust in what I can do. And don't trust what you can do. The Bible said that we should put our hope in things that are eternal today. That we should anchor our hope in Jesus Christ and God and the things that He's able to do in our lives today. Amen. That God's able to do anything today, folks. You believe that? Um, God's able to help us today. David uh, spent a lot of time. I read about in the Bible that Saul was chasing him. King Saul was chasing David. And David hid in a cave one time out in the desert. And uh, you you Bible readers know the story. Saul was there and David snuck up behind him and cut a piece of his skirt off. You know, David could have took his life right then. uh, But David was a man of God. And that's what I desire and that's what I long to be is a man of God. Uh, Folks, me and you as men and women, we need to strive to be men and women of God. Amen? Uh, Men and women of integrity. Men and women of uh, things. This world is full of darkness. But me and you, we've got to be the light in this thing out there, my friend. We've got to be what holds it together. Amen? Somebody asked me the other day what was going to hold this thing together. And I said, well, there's two things that's really going to hold it together. Uh, God's going to hold it together. I said, but the church of the living God is what's holding it together. Do you all believe that today? Uh, I'm not talking about First Baptist Church. I'm not talking about Adriel Baptist Church. I'm talking about those that are believers in Jesus Christ that are on their knees, bended down, praying and crying out to God on behalf of our children, on behalf of your grandchildren, amen, on behalf of our country and our leaders. How many people, preacher, this just don't mean much to me. I want you to know this, if anything turns our country around, it will be the prayers of God's people, amen, concern and wanting what's biblically correct, not what uh, the politicians want and not what the dollar says, but what the Word of God says today, amen. That's what we need today. Are you with me? Let's get into the message today. He said, God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in a time of trouble. I think about me and you as people. Are you going through any trouble right now in your life? Maybe um, this is going on and that's going on. I'll be honest. I've been right. I'm with you this morning. I've had quite a bit of trouble the last few weeks. I've uh, had this going on at work and that going on at work. And it seems like it presses me. I'm like Paul. Sometimes I get pressed beyond me. But uh, I'm glad that through all that, Keith, there's somewhere we can go to. And there's somebody we can turn to. And that's what my message is about today. If you're a child of God today, raise your hand. Now, you all don't participate very often, but you've got to this time. If you're a child of God, raise your hand. Amen. I want you to know if you can raise your hand today and say, I am a child of God, you've got somebody you can turn to today. Amen. You've got a friend, Solomon said. There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You've got somebody that is with you. No matter what happens, somebody you can go to. Psalms 46, that's what David was proclaiming. I've got somebody that I can go to. I've got a refuge. I've got a stronghold. I've got a helper. When things get bad, I can turn to God with my problems. Amen. We all go through troubles. We all go through trials. I thought about David. David was a man that had some trouble. Do you all realize that today? I think about David. You know, David lost a son. Do you realize that this morning? Uh, David had a little baby by uh, Bathsheba. And if you Bible readers know um, what took place there, David lost a child. And uh, through all that, Miss Bobby, David mourned and he hurt. And uh, But through all that, this is what David said about the whole conclusion. He said, I can't bring him him back, but I can go and be with him. Amen. Does that not bring you great joy today? To know that people, that uh, that's a time of trouble when we lose loved ones. That uh, is a lot of trouble, Bobby. That's something that grieves us. That's something that hurts us. But I'm so glad that there's people that when they pass on, that know the Lord. I'm glad they go to be present with Christ. And I'm glad they're united with our Savior, folks. Do you all realize that? 
that today. Uh, for a child of God to pass out of this life, it uh, makes us mourn and it troubles us. But I want you to know heaven is rejoicing today. Do you realize that? Uh, for a child of God that comes home, they're singing and there's rejoicing among the angels today, the Bible said. Ain't that wonderful? Amen to know that. David was a man that had a lot of trouble, Chris. But what I want you to realize, and I'm going to get to that point in a minute, uh, not only that, David had problems with his family. Do you realize that David's own son tried to kill him? Uh, Absalom was a son of David, and he tried to kill David. Why? Because he wanted to be king. That's just well put. He wanted to be king. But through all that, David still was able to maintain his integrity. David didn't take Absalom's life. Guess what? Absalom took his own life, his head got hung in a tree while he was riding on a horse. So uh, David still held his integrity. Folks, listen to me. For a child of God, you know who fights the battle for me and you today. I'm glad God fights my battles. I'm glad God gives my victory. If you're trying to fight a battle today, no matter what it is, no matter if it's at home, no matter if it's with your marriage, no matter if it's with your job, no matter what it is, I want you to know this. you got to run to God. He's your refuge. He's your stronghold. He's your helper. He's your rock and he's your deliverer and God wants to fight that battle for you today. Amen. So many people beat down today. You know why? Because they're trying to do things in their self. Amen. Why? Because, let me ask you a question. Every time you try to fix something yourself, what always happens? Anybody in my congregation try to fix things on your own? Listen, everybody, uh, and I don't know why i got to preach about this, but it's all right. Somebody asked me the other day, and I get a hundred questions, I guess, about a lot of different things. People talk to me about their marriage. People talk to me, and it ain't just one person. It's probably 15 or 20. Some of y'all are going, eh. it's probably 15 or 20. But you know what? The key to no matter if it's a marriage or if it's a job or no matter what it is, a relationship, you know what? The key is putting God first. Amen. Putting Him first. Somebody asked me about me and Mandy, and I, I'll be honest, we're happy. Right, Mandy? She left. I think she left. Don't check. She back there shaking her head, yeah, and grinning. You know why that is? Because, listen to me, uh, the Bible teaches us that, uh, you know, I'm to love her like Christ loved the church. That's very biblical today. That means I got to take care of her. That means I got to provide for her. What does Christ do for me and you? He does exactly that. Amen. And in return, what do we do? We respect Him for who He is. We love Him for who He is. And you know what? That means we come together and we love each other and we look past our faults and our failures but at the bottom of the line the end of the day we both have a refuge to go to it's Christ it's Jesus amen it don't matter what you build a family a business a home a church you've got to build it on Christ today amen ain't no other foundation gonna make it amen man Bruce you're fired up today wish everybody could be here hey wave at them they'll watch us next week on camera wave at them you know what I mean? They'll watch this for long. I'm going to be all right. Listen to me. We've got somebody we can go to. We've got a refuge. You know what a refuge is here in verse 1? Uh, it's somewhere to go for protection. It's somewhere to go for safety. Amen. There's safety in Jesus Christ today. There's protection in God today. Amen. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing right now. I want you to know this. There is peace and there's joy and there's comfort and there's contentment in the arms of Jesus Christ today. Amen. It's a good place to be in it, to be present with the Lord. Some of y'all have got that old stare right now going on. You know, that old glassy eye. You know, the Vols won yesterday, right? Hey, man, look at Charles' shirt. That'll make you smile if nothing else won. Huh? Listen, folks. I thought about it. I turned the radio on this morning. That's the first thing I heard about was how good that Tennessee played football. And I thought to myself, this is the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Let's talk about Him today. Amen. Let's talk about God today. Let's talk about Jesus today. Let's talk about Him being a present, a very present. This is what it said. He said, a very present. That emphasized how present He was. I'm glad that Christ is present today. How about you? He's not in the box and He's not in the grave and He's not in the tomb and He ain't like Buddha and He ain't like Muhammad. I'm glad He's alive and I'm glad He's dwelling in me and you today. What about that? Ain't that good this morning? Man, God is our refuge, 
our strength. Anybody in the congregation they ever made a mistake? Huh? I've reached right made one by coming today. Uh, let's go to Psalm 51 for just a minute and let's think about it. Some of you Bible readers don't know where I'm going with this. David messed up. He saw a pretty woman down there and the story goes on. But regardless of what the sin is, we've all made mistakes. Amen. When we mess up, folks, we need to go to Jesus. And when we mess up, we need to turn to God. Amen. Somebody in the car, I ain't never made no mistakes. That's a typical Baptist right there. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. You sin and you come short every day. If, no, I didn't yesterday, preacher. You just told a lie today, so you just marked that up already. Listen, we've all sinned. We've all come short. And when we mess up, we've got a refuge, Chris. We've got somebody to turn to. We've got somebody that wants to help us. David went to God in Psalms 51. He said, Lord, restore unto me the joys of thy salvation. Is any Anybody happy in the congregation today? Hey, I got three people. I said, is anybody happy? We ought to be happy today. Why? Because you've got such a good pastor. That's why. No, that ain't no reason. You know why you ought to be happy today? Because Jesus is present in our lives today. He's a very present help in all the trouble you're facing. Christ is there with you today. Amen. They named that baby Jesus. His name was Emmanuel. That being interpreted as God with us. We have God with us today. Amen. Everything you say, everything you do, everywhere you go. Little song about be careful little hands what you do. Be careful little eyes what you do. Be careful little feet where you... Listen, don't matter what you see, what you touch, where you go, God goes with you. Amen. You with me this morning? I looked this up to earlier today while I was trying to get ready for this. And Hebrew word for refuge meant a place that wasn't accessible. Huh? In other words, that meant a place that nobody can't get to. If you got that place with God today, I'm talking about a place where you and Him can get. I'm talking about being carried away in the Spirit. I'm talking about when trouble comes, Chris, you can turn the TV off. You can turn the radio off. You can turn the family off. You can turn life off. And you can get away and be a refugee. You know what a refugee is? It's somebody that gets out of a country while there's war coming. I'm talking about drawing yourself away from this world and going to a heavenly place. Amen. If you got that today, if you got somewhere you can go to, well, where's that? I'm telling you, it's in prayer and it's in meditation with Jesus Christ our Lord today. Amen. Don't it feel good to have somewhere you can go? Surely you reflect. I preach about reflecting all the time. I'm not talking about that, that shine that comes off my forehead right here. When I talk about a reflect. I'm talking about looking back on the day. I'm talking about looking back on life. I'm talking about going down memory road. I'm talking about learning from your mistakes. Anybody made them? Everybody's made them. I'm talking about learning from them. But listen, we've got to carry our cares, our wants, our needs. We've got to get to Jesus with them and find refuge in Him today. I began to think about message and I thought about the second verse too. Verse 2 says this. It says, Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You know why David wasn't afraid? Because God was with him. Amen. Listen, folks, I'm glad the Bible talks about and teaches us that we can set, while we're down here, presently here, how that we can set in heavenly places. That's what I'm preaching about, being carried away. That's what I'm talking about, getting to a place of refuge. About getting to the rock, amen? Listen, about a solid foundation. doesn't matter what happens in life, and I'm, uh, I'm going to hurry through this. I can tell you, everybody, you know. Listen, this is the Lord's day, right? Amen? Listen, even Les is smiling, and the bulldog's got beat. He's even smiling right now. Come on, Les, show me your teeth. I've got to reel you back in. I've got to reel everybody back in a minute. Listen to me, folks. We all need this relationship with Christ that I'm preaching about today. 
you got problems, listen, you come to me and I'm glad you can find in me. But nine times out of, no, ten times out of ten, what do I tell every one of you? I tell you, you're going to have to pray about it. Amen. That's something I learned very young as a pastor. You know what the answer is to everything? Just tell everybody to pray about it. You know what I mean. No, that ain't really the answer. But that really is the answer to everything. People, we've got to take our problems, take our cares, take our troubles. We've got to take them to Christ. Amen. He said, come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden. Amen. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. When you take all these things that are distracting you, that are bugging you down, that are worrying you. Anybody in the congregation worry about anything? Amen. Hallelujah. That's the preacher. Amen. I worry about things to worry about. I'll just be honest. I, I'd worry about everything. But listen, when I finally get down on my knees, I'm talking about, you know how things usually have to get for me before I'll really give in? They have to get up to about right here. And I think, man, that's just out of my reach. I'm going to give it to God. If I just give it to him while it's down here, it would never get to right here. Amen. Listen, if we just bring all of our cares, all of our troubles, all of our trials, and lay them at the feet of Jesus, that's what he wants you to do. Do you know that? Whatever you're facing today, and we'll come to close in just a minute, whatever's going on inside of you, whatever emotions you're feeling, Huh? Anybody here today feel like you just cry, River? Huh? Be getting your song ready. I'm coming to a close. At times in my life, I've been to the point where I just felt like nobody didn't understand where I was at, LC. Nobody couldn't understand. Nobody couldn't relate. Nobody couldn't connect. And I think, man, what in the world am I? I have found it to work this way. When nobody can understand, sometimes I come in, Mandy will tell you I don't speak, I just, I'm hateful, I'm irritable. And you know what? And she'll say, what's wrong? And I'll say, you don't understand. I just go on about my, but I've always, man, some of you are thinking, I'm glad I ain't married to him. Listen, you are all human. Don't even look at me and chastise. I know how it is. But now listen to me. I found it to always work this way. Bobby, it doesn't matter what problem I have. It doesn't matter what I'm going through when I finally come to Christ and when I finally come to God and when I finally come to this refuge and when I finally seek help he knows exactly what I'm going through I'll start telling him about it and it's just like he's living through it right then and there that's the friend I'm talking about today folks he knows exactly what you're facing and he knows exactly what you're going through amen David said, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to close like this. David also said this. He said, if I were to have wings and ascend into the heavens, or if I were to make my bed in hell. Anybody here ever soared with the eagles before? Amen. I've been there before. Keith, I've been there. You know what I mean? I've been there. I've been at the foot of Jesus. I didn't say I stay there. I've been there. Anybody ever been there before? I've been there. If there's anybody here ain't never been there, you need to come. We need to get you Jesus. Amen. I promise there's been one time if you belong to God, you've been at the knees of Jesus, at the feet of when you accepted Christ as your Savior, you have been at the feet of Jesus before. Amen. People tell me all the time, living in sin, but they tell me all the time, I wish I could feel as good as I did the day God saved me. <laughs> I have felt as good. I ain't never felt no better. But I felt as good before as the day God saved me. Amen. Have you ever felt that good before? Glory bumps. I'm talking about uh, just free in the Spirit. Surely you've been there since then. If you've not turned loose of sin, turned loose of the world, come out and be ye a separated people. Now that didn't get no amens. What do you want to do? Live in sin and try to enjoy the things of God? It don't work that way. You've got to separate yourself from that. Amen? That's a whole other message. We ain't getting into that. Has anybody, so people here, you've ascended to the heavens and you've soared like an eagle? And has anybody ever made their bed in hell? Huh? Hmm. <clears throat> You ever thought about the decisions you make you have to pay for? The choices you make? The consequences that come with them? I'm glad we got a refuge. What about you? 
I'm glad we've got somebody we can go to. What about you? Everybody, if you will, let's all stand. I can hear, we sing a song, I can hear my Savior calling. I think a lot of times about Jonah, the shape he got in, he made his bed in hell, didn't he? In other words, he chose to do the opposite of what God wanted. I'm preaching right down the alley to some people here today. Are you glad that we've got God with us? And aren't you glad we've got a Savior? He said this, he said, I can be touched with your infirmities. In other words, he feels exactly where you're at right now. Hey, people here today looking around like you lost your best friend. I'm standing right here. I can't even hardly get a laugh out of some of you. Folks, there's more to life than frowning. There's more to life than being tormented. I'm going to close like this. I thought she was going to close a while ago. No, I am going to close like this. Just because you live for God does not mean that everything is going to be perfect. Huh? Just because you come to church every Sunday and Sunday night and Wednesday night does not mean there's not going to be trouble. But I can promise you this. Christ is a solid foundation. And the church is built upon a rock. And he told Peter, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The world ain't got no power over me and you. Only what we give them. Now if you're here today and you're out in left field and you're miserable and you're heartbroken and you could cry a river and you're unhappy and you know what, you wish I'd hush, you're a good candidate. Why don't you come and pray? Find refuge and seek refuge and comfort and safety in the arms of Jesus. While they sing, would you come?